Hi guys, welcome back to another map of the day. And today we're going to be looking at the map Valley of Kings. So um, we'll briefly go over what this map is supposed to look like. So basically the players are in a circle surrounding the map. They have only a small pile of gold and stone near their bases. And the rest of the majority of the mineral resources are in the middle area here in the valley, which is at a lower elevation than the players, um, and it contains most of the extra gold and stone. Um, and this valley area is very large, so um, we can see that compared to a map like Gold Rush, it's not the case where one team or one player can have control over the entire middle at one point in time. Um, there's a lot of room here for multiple players to be controlling it at the same time. So in addition to that, um, there were a couple of Gaia Kings throughout this valley, um, which in a random map game doesn't really mean much besides providing an extra scouting unit. But um, in regicide games, you don't actually lose the game unless you have zero Kings left. So um, for example, if you were playing regicide and you happen to lose your starting King, um, you would not lose the game if you found one of these extra ones in the valley. So that's just the little gimmick of this map. And so um, let's keep on making some generations of this map and we'll see we have a bit of a problem here. So we can, we can see that on all of the other um, variations of this map, the grassy area was all encompassing, as in it would never protrude to the edge. But in this case, we have a slight problem here where the elevation is failing to generate and it's causing a little problem here. So what I want to take a look at is this particular seed of the map. So in order to test this, I can switch from random map to seed map. And then when I keep generating it, it'll of course generate the exact same thing. It's no longer random. But by doing this, we can um, analyze this particular seed step by step Fine. to see what's causing the problem. So here we're looking at the code for this particular map, and we can see um, in the land generation section, um, there's only two land statements that are here. One is creating the central land, and one is creating the player lands, which are at a higher elevation. The elevation section here, um, we'll first just take a look at the land section. So if we generate this same seed, uh, we can see that we have created that central land, which is the dirt terrain, and we can see where the player lands have been um, generated with this higher elevation here. You know, in order to um, cover the rest of the grass with an elevation, we can use this particular elevation um, statement that says create elevation 6 on grass 2. And so with that elevation statement in the map, let's generate this particular seed again, and we'll notice a couple things. So first is that it's no longer easy enough to distinguish to the, the player lands from the rest of the grass terrain, because the rest of the grass terrain was filled with that particular elevation. Except we can see that there are points in which this middle terrain will kind of overlap onto the player lands, and this is a bit easy to see because of the slope of this particular hill. So we can see that where the player lands are overlapping the middle land is where we can see that the slope of this hill is the dirt terrain, and then where the player lands are not overlapping this middle terrain, the slopes of the hill are going to be grass. And the other thing to notice is that pretty much everywhere else on the map, the uh, elevation 6 was successfully able to generate, except for this particular area here. We can see it managed to generate elevation on those tiles, but a uh, much lower elevation than we said. So um, we can see that this is causing our problem here if we go into the terrain generation section. So this terrain statement here is supposed to be making the map a bit more homogeneous. So since we have areas where the slope of the hill is going to be dirt and the slope of the hill is going to be grass here, this 
particular dirt statement is supposed to just cover the slopes of the hill so that it looks more homogeneous. And it's supposed to only target the slopes of the hill because of these height limits here. So since the rest of the land is supposed to be at elevation 6, which we generated here and here, it's not supposed to generate on top of where this ring of grass is supposed to be. But the issue is, since this particular area failed to generate at that higher elevation, we can see that this particular terrain statement is affecting this area in a way that we don't want. So it may not be such a horrible thing in this particular case, but I've seen other generations in which this problem can be a whole lot worse. So let's keep on generating. Yeah, so we can get into a situation like this where this area of the map is not even close to resembling what it's supposed to look like on this particular side of the map. And so clearly we have a potential bug in this map and we're going to go and this video is going to be focusing on how to address this. So in order to address this issue, we're going to try two different methods. And the first method I'm going to go over is to how to make sure that this particular bug where the elevation is failing to generate won't occur at all. And the way we're going to do that is by changing the way that we set up this map in terms of how the lands are created. Okay, so now we're in our test script where we're going to be trying a new method to sort of combat this problem that we're seeing in this particular map. Well, first let's take a look at how um, the original map is doing its particular land generation. So we'll copy all of this over and see what it looks like. So right off the bat, when we're talking about, we'll call it the inner zone and the outer zone, there's not much of a discrete separation between the two. And what I mean by that is that there's only grass two and dirt terrain, and they're going to be touching each other with no real intermediate terrain in between them. And I'm going to adjust the map to have a more discrete zone separation. And with that, the base terrain of the map is going to be beach and we'll see why uh, later on. So uh, we can create the dirt in the middle very similarly to what we did at first, but what we're going to do differently is give it zone ID, we'll give it zone one, and then give it an other zone avoidance distance attribute of seven, and then when we're looking at the player lands here, we'll increase this land percent to 100. Um, we'll get rid of these borders here. And to compensate for that, I will increase the base size slightly. Other zone avoidance distance of 7 is OK. And then instead of having the zone, each player's zone be independent, I'm going to assign one zone to the entirety of the player lands, zone 2, and we'll take a look at what this looks like. So if we go into a test script, we can see what this looks like here. We have more of a definitive separation between the uh, outer zone and the inner zone here with this beach terrain in the middle. And we can see, if we keep generating this, that we can see that there's never any situations in which elevation is generating somewhere and failing to generate in another place. But um, we can see that there's also a side effect to this in that since we increase the percentage of the player lands, it's really starting to squish the, the inside zone uh, because the player lands are taking precedence here. Yeah, we can see that that middle zone can be really squished in some situations. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of having a single um, land for um, the middle zone, I'm going to have multiple. So they're all going to be sharing the same zone, but they're going to be at different land positions. So so 
So land position 33. And then this one is going to be at 3070, 7030, and then 7070. And then if we compare that to only having one land, when we have four, we can see that we have a much larger area available to us. It's not always consistently um, large, but we can see it's better than it was when we only had one particular uh, land in this middle zone. Now, let me explain why we're setting the uh, player lands to have such a high land percent. So if we compare it to having a lower land percent, like 20, this would make it so that the central land would be less squished compared to if the player lands were 100%. But the reason we are doing this as, at 100% is that we want to create the elevation as a base elevation rather than as a create elevation statement in the... Um, like this. If, um, so the reason we have it at 100% is so that the entirety of the outside area is going to be generated at that base elevation. So now that we modified the foundation of our map to be this particular way, let's bring back some of the other sections um, of the map. So um, the elevation section We'll bring that in. You can keep generating and see what that does. We'll bring in the terrains next. Okay, so now that we have our terrain section in, um, let's take a look at a, another potential issue. So let's compare the original map. Um, this is a bugged version, but uh, we can see that there is a certain amount of area in this uh, map, and it's usually fairly consistent in this, in this middle area. And if we compare it to our test map that we're trying to recreate, we can see that it's not always consistent. See, this uh, particular generation has uh, quite a little bit of area in this middle area. And then some other generations can be slightly bigger, like this one here. So in this section, we are creating a few different terrains on top of this middle dirt. So we're creating fungus, which is this road grassy. We're creating desert. We're creating palm desert. And we're creating shallow. So each of these has a specific percent of the dirt that it's going to take up. So 8% of the total maps area is going to be covered with fungus. 8% of the total maps area is going to be covered in desert. 1% is going to be palm desert. And then another 1% is going to be shallow. And then whatever is left over is going to still be dirt. And we can see that here that there's very little area of the map that's left being dirt. So this section here is left. And we can see that it can run into a bit of a problem since all of the extra gold on the map is supposed to be generating on this terrain dirt. So if we brought back the object section, we could potentially run into a problem where there's hardly any dirt left on the map because of the variance in the way this particular method works. So in order to combat this issue, well, first, what we can do are the simpler things, which is slightly reduce the amount of um, uh, percent that all these are gonna be taking up. So we'll reduce this from eight to five, and then from eight to five again. So this is um, helping us slightly, but we are still under the restriction that the extra gold and stone have to be placed on this uh, dirt terrain. Even though it could potentially be placed on desert, it won't do that because of our terrain restriction. So um, in order to give these 
resources a bit more freedom, we're going to do something else besides a terrain um, limitation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give one of the middle lands a land ID, land ID one. And then for these middle resources, the extra gold and the extra stone, instead of using a terrain to place on attribute, I'm going to use place on specific land ID one. And then that goes there and that goes there. And then I'll remove the min distance to players also. And so now what we've done here is that we've removed the restriction for those extra resources to be placed on the um, dirt terrain. So that way, if we get into a situation where this middle area happens to generate very few tiles so that there's not much dirt left over, we could still potentially generate these resources on other areas of the map. And we have to keep in mind that placing on specific land ID is only going to work if we have a restricted terrain between the player zone and the middle zone. And that was the whole reason for having this beach terrain um, in between. Because if that, if that particular terrain was something that wasn't restricted for golden stone to be placed, if it was also dirt, then placing on a specific land ID shouldn't work. And we can see that here, all of the, um, the extra gold and stone can be placed outside of the uh, middle area, which is something we were trying to avoid. We wanted it all to be in the middle. So that's why it was important to have that extra layer in there, having the beach terrain as a separator between the outer zone and the inner zone here. So let's just recap what we've done here and compare what we have now to what we started with. So if we um, go to the original map, we can see that we can have a fairly consistent amount of area in the middle of the map, but that's provided that the map even generates properly because we can still run into these issues here where elevation is going to fail to generate. And that's kind of just an issue that we kind of have to live with. There's no real way to make that elevation issue go away. So we can still run into these issues here. And if we compare it to the test map that we just made, is that we have a slight drawback in that the central land can be a bit more compressed uh, because the player lands are at such a high percentage now. But we have the benefit of we can generate this map with confidence that the elevation on the map is going to always generate properly. There's never going to be any situations in which some tiles of the map are going to generate at a lower elevation than they're supposed to and cause us problems there. Okay, so that's one way to skin this cat. And I will be going over another method, which is going to be very similar to this first issue. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to keep the foundation of the map the same way and we're just going to basically accept the fact that this elevation is going to fail to generate sometimes. It's just going to be something we deal with and we're going to put in some um, extra code to help combat this elevation issue when it does come up. So um, what we'll do here is we'll copy the original map and overwrite all the code that's in our test map here so that our test map is now going to represent very close um, pretty much exactly the original version which includes the potential issues of elevation failing to generate so we have this issue here and now let's keep this particular seed in order to figure out what we're going to do to try and combat this issue so what we're going to do is actually fairly simple. So let's comment out everything uh, before uh, after the terrain generation section. So right here, we can see that we have our elevation failing to generate here. And then the first statement in the terrain generation section is supposed to be 
uh, creating the dirt on elevations 0 through 5. And since this area here is at a lower elevation than it's supposed to, it's getting um, affected by that. So what we're going to do is before we generate this dirt, we're going to put in what I like to call a safety layer. So uh, if we let's have another create terrain statement, and we'll be creating grass on top of grass two. And instead of height limits, we're going to say spacing to other terrain types seven. Well, actually, we'll call that leaves to make it a bit more um, easier to see. So basically, what we're doing here is that we're creating the, these leaves that are seven tiles away from the dirt. And where this is going to come in handy now is that if we come at this other um, statement, which is creating the dirt on elevations 0 through 5, we can see that instead of protruding all the way to the edge of the map and affecting all of this area, it's going to be prevented by this these leaves to only generate within that seven tile width so that this safety layer is preventing it from spreading out and affecting more area than um, we would prefer. So once we have gone through that intermediate step, we can cover those leaves back up with the terrain that we want in the end, which is going to be grass two. So we'll create grass two on top of leaves. So we'll generate this same seed again. And we can see what we've achieved here so that uh, we can keep our map relatively the same. But we've added that safety layer in so that it's always the case that we're going to be preserving this terrain um, the way it's supposed to be. So if we uncomment the rest of the map, we can see it looks pretty much this, the exact way it's supposed to. There's going to be the elevation that failed to generate here, but it's not going to have that negative of, a, of an effect on our map as it would otherwise if this dirt terrain were to protrude all the way to the edge and affect that larger area. And let's keep in mind that since this was based off of the old version, it's still the case that the extra gold and stone on the map are going to be restricted to be pl being placed on dirt. And um, in this particular case, where we have the middle area going to be a more consistent number of tiles using this particular method, we could potentially keep it that way, or we could use a potentially different method, which I will show. So um, there is no zone separation between this outer zone and this inner zone. Like in the last example, we had beach separating, so we could potentially have used a land ID, but since we have no zone separation in this case, a land ID won't work for us here. But we can do something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a placeholder object, which is going to be um, number zero. So object zero is a good placeholder object if you want it to be invisible and you want it to take up area. So if we create object A, I'm going to create object A, number of objects is going to be very many. I'm going to temp min distance replacement two. Um, and then we're going to terrain to place on, and that's going to be grass two. And then what we're going to do is give this an actor area. Radius of five. So that's gonna be on grass two. And then if we also notice that there's a few other patches of grass, um, I mean dirt three here, we'll cover our bases and create that same object on 
dirt three. And we can see what this does here is that it creates all these many, many objects here. And then instead of having our extra resources restricted to dirt terrain, what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to have it avoid all actor areas. So since all of the outside zone was covered in these placeholder objects, so when we generate the resources in the middle and we say avoid all those objects, then all of our resources are going to be placed in the middle and we're no longer restricting them to be placed on dirt. See, this is able to be placed on desert terrain here. And then we can remove these restrictions even further. This grassy road terrain is still a restricted terrain for placing um, gold and stone piles. See, none of the gold and stone piles are replaced there. But we could potentially change that by, instead of creating the fungus as a terrain, we can create it as a layer. Terrain, terrain mask one. So now, when we're dealing with layered terrains, it's always the terrain that's underneath whose properties are going to be preserved. So since we masked that grassy road on top of the um, ground terrain, which is a suitable terrain for placing um, golden stone piles, this um, grassy road is now just an aesthetic terrain. It's not affecting um, the placement of our golden stone piles. And we can see where this might be useful. And so if we go back from the seed map to a random map, if we happen to run into a situation where the players are happening to spawning rather, rather close to the center and the, there ends up being fewer tiles in the middle, um, we can still have a lot of freedom to place our golden stone resources, even if we can run into a situation where there ends up not being very much dirt left on the map. So, um, I think with that, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. So, um, hopefully I've shown um, that there are different ways to solve problems when you're dealing with your issues and maps. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.